This segment is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello, welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen, and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. And welcome to the third part of our Wi-Fi workshop. This is the one that I did over at NoiseBridge, the excellent hackerspace here in San Francisco. You're going to have to give me just a moment. Mm. Rehydrating, because we just got back from DEF CON 20 and had a fantastic time there. In fact, I actually did a workshop there, uh, much similar to the one you're about to see, uh, with uh, Sebastian, a.k.a. Seb, <laughs> as well as Robin Wood, a.k.a. Digi Ninja, from the Wi-Fi Pineapple Project. So, um, yeah, awesome stuff. In fact, even doing another workshop here next week um, at uh, in, in northern Washington, or the westernmost tip of Washington, at Tor Camp. We're going to have some awesome... Awesome footage from that. It's like Burning Man for hackers. I don't really know. <laughs> Actually, DEF CON was more like Nerding Man. Um, but I won't geek out too much here. I'm just uh, here to let you guys know that this is part three of three of our Wi-Fi workshop. I want to thank you for tuning in. We got so much great feedback on the last two. So I know you guys are going to enjoy this. And be sure to just tweet us and, and, and plus us and like us and all of those other things. Let us know what you think about this stuff. And we're having a lot of fun with it. So without further ado, Here's me in a workspace thing, doing a thing. Let's roll. Paul, make the thing happen. Thanks. So last time on this panel, we were talking about management frames and all of the other different ins and outs of uh, 802.11, our beloved Wi-Fi, how it works. So let's understand it. And I think a lot of you have already kind of seen what we've alluded to about the way that the the, the beacons and the probes and the requests and some of the demos have come and illustrated some nefarious things that you can do with it and because it's all really just based on trust. The authentication bit is there to do like, hey, do you, you know, my Wi-Fi is around, here, join me, here are my capabilities and channels, oh, I'm using WPA2, you know? And it's like, all right, good luck, you know, you're not going to brute force that uh, unless they're using a common SSID and their password is in the dictionary, in which case there's probably already rainbow tables. But that aside, if they're using something unique and something pretty secure, that's not what this is about. Because there are so many more fun and interesting ways to hack Wi-Fi than breaking into your neighbor's wireless network. I mean, that's really kind of boring. Although if you want to do that, most everybody still has WPS enabled, so go check out Reaver, because that'll, that'll take it down like that. It's awesome. Uh, we can talk about that some other time. So I bring up, how's your karma? How's your karma? Awesome. Good to hear. Mine's, mine's pretty good too. I'm stoked because we've been here for like a year and we finally came out here to meet you guys. And honestly, we're only doing this just because we want to network. So if you're timid about coming up and saying hi, don't. Please do that because we're here to meet our peers. Um, you got a pineapple and alpha at cost, so that'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm going to lure all the hackers in with cheap hardware and education. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to ask them, how's your karma? You know, just nothing, nothing real deep or anything, but. Convenience. Yeah, convenience. Actually, that's what we're talking about right now is convenience and karma. You see, karma is this awesome tool written by Dino a couple years back and then later adopted by my boy Robin Wood who then took it from one driver set called Mad Wi-Fi to another one called Mad Wi-Fi NG and now to a thing called Host APD. And it's a tool, and it's, it's the basis of a tool set that we've developed that we like to call a Yazaga. And Yazaga is German for the yes man. Und ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. So what Yazaga does is when it sees a probe request like that, it says yes, because it's the yes man. We can talk about Ninezega too, the no man. In fact, I think we did some deauthenticating, and I, uh, oh yeah, it looks like that's going pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, deauthenticating. It's going pretty well. But uh, we're just talking about Yazuga right now, and it's simple. It's so beautiful what a simple white lie can do to break the inherent trust that is the whole system, you know? And so 
What that allows us to do, if we're running a wireless access point here, that all it's doing is looking for probe requests saying, hey, are you my Linksys? Hey, are you NoiseBridge? Hey, are you ATT Wi-Fi? Hey, are you GoGo InFlight? Hey, are you KOIT? Whatever, like you name it. Th uh, this thing is responding to it and saying, yeah, that's me. Let's be best friends for life. <laughs> and that now, you can imagine, if you're walking one of these guys on a battery pack, secluded in some sort of a canister outside, I don't know, something that people won't steal. You could actually go up to one of those. There are these boxes, I've seen them down here. I just moved to San Francisco a little over a year ago, so a lot of this is new to me, but I've seen these, they have them out here on the street. It's like a, this tin can, and you put a cord, or if it's a Sunday, and you open this door and they've got these dead trees that tell you things. It's like an RSS reader, except it's really slow. Well, if you lift up the bottom of those, there's enough room in there to put a car battery. And this thing runs off 12 volts. So if you were to say conceal one of these guys with a little 3G dongle, uh, this one's great from T-Mobile. I'm not promoting T-Mobile. I also have ones from like Ting and ones from uh, Virgin Mobile. I really like the Virgin Mobile one too. This is great. I literally um, bought this online. Actually, I guess the T-Mobile one's a better experience because I didn't have to use an address. I went to the T-Mobile store and I bought this with cash. And a man asked me to write my name on a post-it note. <laughs> yeah. And then I go down to the Moy Pueblo and I get myself a little card and I scratch off some things and it's awesome. I've got internet with anonymity. And now it's connected to my pineapple. And this is so beautiful because now if I put this in that little tin can out on the street that offers people newspapers, I can also offer them internets. And that's just a, like, uh, just a nice little public service, a little thing that I like to do for everyone. And it's kind of great because you can manage it remotely with SSH tunnels and things like that and do a little bit of packet sniffing and what we like to call man in the middle. And I shouldn't have to explain that at a hacker space. Um, my slides are out of order and that's a pineapple. Yes? How is the uh, USB dongle plugged into the pineapple? Do you have like a converter? Or? I have a floppy dongle manipulator on it and it allows it to pivot in multiple ways. It's pretty cool. But oh, so there's a USB port. There's a USB port, yeah. But if you get the manipulator, it can do that. Huh? I'm just saying. You're not living until you got a floppy dongle. So, um, originally we developed this on the show, uh, Hack 5, Season 4, Episode 1, just kind of like as a big, like, ah, hey, wouldn't that be great? You know, it actually got its name because of Jim Ladderback, CEO, or, or something of, uh, CEO, I believe, of um, Revision 3, in that, um, he was talking to us when we were joining the network and, he, and, and we're like, oh, we've got this awesome segment planned. We're gonna do it like on the first episode when we join Revision 3 and we're gonna get a lot of viewers. It's gonna be so great. And I gotta think of some gimmick, some way to make it cute or whatever because it's really all about invoking an emotional response with something and there's nothing better than cartoons for that, right? So I decided to do the pineapple, right? Because it's like a grenade. That actually turns out Wi-Fi grenade is already taken. And you know, honestly, I like the pineapple better. It's cuter. And so it was pretty cool in that when we did that first episode and I actually used a real pineapple. By the way, FYI, don't core out fruit and put hardware in it. If you ever want to use that hardware again, it gets sticky. And uh, so a year goes by and we're not doing, we're, we're like, we've moved on and we give out the firmware and we're like, hey guys, go get this router and solder this thing and get this thing and throw on the stuff. And there's like a 47 step tutorial and it's really a lot of fun. And, um, and it just so happened that they make party cups that were the perfect size to fit the board and a battery pack in with a little hole for the straw that was perfect for the antenna. And so that's how I end up with these. I don't know why the slide is there. Oh, that's what it looks like on the inside. It's just fun. Oh, don't go through airport security with one of these though. <laughs> I actually had somebody like pull me aside and be like, can you explain this? And I was like, to be honest, that's my novelty router. Really? Yeah, they make them in coconut too. <laughs> I think I bring all of that up because of Hackers for Charity. Who's I'm so excited to welcome back a fond sponsor of ours, GoToAssist by Citrix. You guys know that working in IT is unpredictable and challenging. The firewalls going off at the same time that you're getting calls from management about the thing you told them not to click. Meanwhile, everyone's expecting you to get everything done without breaking what's already there. I know, I've been there, and that's why I am so excited about GoToAssist by Citrix. It helps you stay on top of it all. GoToAssist is software as a service and purpose-built, giving you more control over your IT world. You can use their world-class remote support to solve your users' problems quickly from anywhere. And GoToAssist Monitor brings customizable dashboards displaying performance of everything on your network, plus proactive alerting allows you to fix small issues before they become a huge headache. 
GoToAssist is so easy to use. You're going to have it up and running in minutes. It's by Citrix, a leader in IT. I've used GoToAssist in my sysadmin jobs before, and man, do I wish I had this latest version back then. Sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com and click the Try It Free button and use the promo code HAK5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com with promo code HAK5. I think I bring all of that up because of Hackers for Charity. Who's familiar with this? All right, more people should be raising their hands next time because Hackers for Charity is this awesome uh, thing put together by a man by the name of Johnny Long. You may know him as j 0 ny as in Johnny I Hack Stuff, as in uh, the Google Hacker, as in he's written a lot of books, totally awesome uh, dude as far as uh, hacking and social engineering is concerned. And so what he did was he didn't go to Bolivia, he went to Botswana. I know, I don't know what the regulations are like in Wi-Fi, but he went to Botswana with his wife and started doing some uh, really cool work with, uh, with children there and helping people learn computers and stuff like that. And next thing you know, builds this charity where for the longest time was accepting hardware and the money and then building like computer centers where they teach people like useful skills where they can go out and get jobs and it's really a whole big heartwarming thing and it's awesome because they support the hacker community, the hacker community supports them and they're doing some good work in Botswana. Maybe they'll branch out to Bolivia, I don't know. Um, I mention that because, and is it there? No. I mention that because uh, this guy, probably a year after we debuted this pineapple thing, and like people are knocking down our door, will you make me one, will you build me one, will you custom this one, and it's like, no, dude, here's the hardware, solder it up, 47 step thing, you'll be done in four hours, it'll be a lot of fun. You'll learn a lot, and, it, and it's totally true, and we still absolutely wholeheartedly support that. Um, but uh, Johnny Long called me up and he said, dude, I'm going to the House of Representatives like day from tomorrow or tomorrow, or something like that. He's like, can I get a pineapple? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I whip one up and FedEx it overnight to Maryland, and he does this thing, and I, I wish I had the photo up on here, but if you, uh, uh, somewhere on the hack shop. If you go to uh, hakshop.com or just wifipineapple.com, you'll find it, and it's like on the product page, and it's at the very bottom, and it's and it's Johnny Long with the pineapple in front of the House of Representatives, and so that was pretty cool. And so that following ShmooCon, remember Epic Hacker Conference where you can throw things at people, and you guys are totally allowed to here. I know that I can talk fast, but please throw your laptop at me. Um, Ubuntu, um, and then. Uh, and then so for the next um, ShmooCon, they were doing a silent auction. And so we figured to benefit hackers for charity, we'd go ahead and donate one of these. And the thing went for like 400 bucks. And we were like, well, wait, what? Really? Really? So since then, pretty much, we've been uh, doing this and, and labeled it the Wi-Fi Pineapple. And um, now we sell it to government agencies, uh, educational institutions, penetration testers, and hackers, um, aka 12-year-olds. The point of it all, the whole point of this whole Fun, Yazuga, Wi-Fi Pineapple, Karma Integrated, Driver Hacking, uh, Wi-Fi Router of Doom is so that you can become the man in the middle so that just like your internet service provider, just like Comcast or Time Warner or AT&T or Cox Communications or whoever else you've got, they can eavesdrop, do a little bit of packet sniffing just like we were doing on uh, Wireshark on, on um, our Mon Zero interface, they can do like phishing attacks. You know, I mean, we, we pretty much trust that Comcast isn't going to do phishing attacks on us. Except for when they reroute DNS, when you type in the wrong thing and now they get some other stuff with ads. Um, Sidejacking attacks, those are really fun. That's when like, I'm like, oh, hey, was that your cookie? Cool, let me borrow that cookie and hey, now I'm you on Facebook. Um, and then injection, which is really cool, where you're like, oh, cool, you want that web page, and it's got all these JavaScript dependencies, and why don't we throw this other JavaScript that I got? You might like it. It's called keylogger.js. Yeah, yeah, go type your password. Um, and kittens, because if you're not injecting kittens into the internet, you're really not doing humanity a service. So just bear in mind that your ISP is capable of doing the same thing. This just makes it easier for you to become you know, an endpoint in the whole uh, wonderful router hopping fun that is the internet. Um, so I recently hacked a conference and I started building these little boxes and I just figured that it'd be really fun to take these things which are known as uh, 18650 batteries. Pretty cool, it's, uh, the designation comes from 18 is the first number, it's 18 millimeters in diameter, 650 tenths of a millimeter uh, long. And uh, these things are what is in most of your guys' laptops right now. They're 3.7 volts each. You get them in around 3,500 milliamp hours. 
Um, and I think over 9,000 of them are in the Tesla Roadster. So I started putting them in boxes with, uh, with Wi-Fi pineapple and 3G adapters and buttons and things like that. Uh, here's another example of one. This is a really fun one. I, I uh, built battery packs, tossed the router in there. And um, magnets, how do they work, right? <laughs> Well, the nice thing about this is it's pretty inconspicuous. I mean, this is actually a Starbucks in Point Richmond. You guys should come by. That's where our studio is. We hang out there all the time. You guys are all welcome. Just text me. And um, here's it at South by Southwest. Can, you, can everybody see it?